Jetisu Semirechia, the land of seven rivers, the land of our ancestors. Open space, grandeur, fertile valleys, free flowing rivers, shaded forests, endless steppes. Every time I see the snowy spurs of the heavenly mountains, the first bastions of the Tian Shan, the whimsical canyons of Sharin, the mysterious rock carvings of Tangali, I remember the words attributed to the American Indian chief Seattle. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. The Trans Illa Alatau, by Asian standards a small mountain range, is the pearl of Semirechia. Each morning I catch myself searching for a glimpse of its snow white peaks, lost in the blue haze. As in centuries past, they gaze impartially upon the petty lives of human beings, upon their cities and villages, climbing up the foothills of the range. But I am caught in memories, and I see the ice carving out the gorges and hanging threateningly over the moraine lakes, the sun playing on the mountain's crystal armor, the valleys, the wetlands, streams and lakes, the colors of the alpine meadows. Above all of this splendor, the peak of Talgar, which rises higher than its famous alpine comrades, Mont Blanc and the Matterhorn. The mountains conquer their conquerors. Having been here once, you will forever remain a captive of their harsh beauty. It is as though they pull you to themselves, drawing you into another world, offering the chance to match your strength. It is as though time has stopped, and man and nature have rejected their age-old battle and finally made peace. The trans Illa Alatau are relatively young, but they have survived much in their time, as testified by the many traces of earthquakes in the Talgar, Issyk, and big and small Almaty gorges. The quakes have significantly altered the face of the mountains, giving them their unique appearance. About 2,000 years ago, Big Almaty Lake was created, and in 1887, as a result of the powerful Verney quake, the Akshar landslide formed in Aksai Gorge, one of the largest landslides in the world. In many places, the tracks of the Ice Age have been preserved. At an altitude of three and a half kilometers, the feeling arises that you have fallen into another latitude. The landscape of the mountain valleys calls to mind the Arctic tundra. They were once the beds of glaciers. Here, at a depth of one to two meters, lies the eternal permafrost. Islands of permafrost may be found even in the forest zone on the right bank of the Shenturgen River. They hide in the relic spruce forests under a thick blanket of mosses. The peaks of the main range are covered by glaciers. In the opinion of scientists, their thickness reaches 200 to 300 meters, and their total area is more than 37 square kilometers, a territory large enough to accommodate a small city. I love to sit by a stream, breathing in the aroma of spruce needles, wandering through the grass, and each time I am struck by the richness and diversity of our mountain's green cloak. Rowan, wild rose, aspen, buckthorn and raspberry are common inhabitants of the mountain forest. However, there are also plants that are encountered only in our region. Several of these were first described by well-known travelers and researchers of Central Asia. Semyonov's maple, Mushketov's atrafaxis, and Yanchevsky's currant. In the Transilla Alatau lives and flourishes the most ancient ancestor of the cultivated strains of apple trees, the Seaver's apple. It is no accident that from the time Almaty was founded, orchards have been planted on the mountain slopes, bringing widespread fame to the city. Apples are the dearest gift of Almaty. 
Another celebrity of our mountains is the Tian Shan spruce, or Schrenk's spruce, a beautiful and mighty tree that lives for some 300 years and reaches a height of 45 meters. It is capable of growing on steep, nearly vertical slopes. The relict spruce forests, which have survived the ice ages and many changes in climate, occupy a significant portion of the range. Their trees stand in tight ranks, like ancient warriors guarding the serenity of the mountains. In Europe, such forests are a great rarity, which makes them especially attractive to scientists and tourists. This is a treasure in which one can take pride, and which must be protected. Elderly people tell of how previously in the mountains they often encountered martens, mountain goats, bears, and lynxes. Since then, much has changed. Some animals have concealed themselves in distant wild gorges. Others have become so rare that they have been included in the pages of the Red Book of Kazakhstan, which lists the country's endangered species. And there are those of whom only legends remain, even of the snow leopard, the symbol of the city of Almaty. Nothing definite can be said. Does it still live in our mountains, or has it resettled for good onto brightly colored labels and commemorative coins? The creation of a national park in the Transila Alatau has improved the situation somewhat. It is delightful to see how flocks of partridges fly up literally at your feet, how tree creepers putter businesslike among the rocks, marmots play on the hilltops, and birds frolic through the air. The diversity and abundance of nature's gifts have drawn people to the foothills of the Transila Alatau. One tribe has followed another, leaving legends and sayings about their land. Cities have flourished and fallen as hordes of conquerors have swept over the land. Magnificent grave mounds, or kurgans, were erected in memory of the mighty rulers of the land. Caravans laden with silk, spices, and porcelain traveled along the mountains from one city to the next. I am amazed and struck with admiration by the respect that our ancestors showed towards their land. The names of the peaks, lakes, rivers, and valleys speak for themselves. The peak of Khantengri, the home of the revered god, Lake Isik, the holy lake, and Maibulak River, the spring of the goddess of fertility. The ancient settlers succeeded not only in preserving their reverence for the land, but in supporting the fragile ecological balance over the course of the millennia. They protected their native land and its beauty, and passed it on as an inheritance to future generations. And what will we leave our children? For thousands of years, this earth has provided food, drink, and shelter to many peoples. And it is especially painful for me to see how the natural environment of this abundant land is being ruined and destroyed. The mountains are the green heart of Semerechia. The lives and well-being of thousands of people depend on their environmental health. It is for this reason that the Almaty Nature Preserve and Ila Alatau National Park were formed. The true treasure of our mountains is the wonderful drinking water that flows from them, the taste of which the residents of Almaty know well. This is a priceless gift of nature, one that the inhabitants of many regions of Kazakhstan lack. Millions of people in countries around the world are forced to purchase specially prepared water. Only 50 years ago, water was taken directly from the lakes, rivers, and springs of the Transila Alatau to be used for various purposes. Today, the water quality has worsened. One of the reasons is the smog that is formed over the city. It rises to a height of more than 4,000 meters, shrouding with its deadly soot the glaciers, alpine meadows, evergreen, and deciduous forests. The melting of the glaciers is accelerated. The behavior of the rivers and lakes is altered and becomes unpredictable. The forests suffer no less from human activity. Due to pollution, the young shoots perish and mature trees sicken. In the thinning forests, fewer and fewer places remain for birds and beasts. The soil, unprotected by vegetation, is losing its moisture. Mudslides form and the flooding in the spring and during heavy rainfall becomes more destructive. The crippled forests lose their most valuable properties, which bring far more benefit than the cutting of timber. The picturesque mountain slopes are being transformed into a typical construction site. The engines of bulldozers roar ever more piercingly, 
and the sound of axes grows ever louder. In the race for profit and dubious prestige, the worshippers of the golden calf wipe out everything in their path, killing and defacing the earth. The leaders of the state are silent, the bought-off officials fail to act, and the frightened people do not stir. The annihilation of nature and the monuments of history is hindered only by the impassable cliffs, the raging rivers, the ice and snow. It is difficult to comprehend why all this is happening to the ancient land of Simurechia. The world community is striving to preserve the outstanding creations of nature and the hand of man. Under the aegis of UNESCO already fall the Egyptian pyramids and the Great Barrier Reef, the Great Wall of China, and the volcanoes of Kamchatka. What kind of darkness has fallen over us? I recall the Egyptian legend of the sun god Ra. Outraged by the deeds of men, he mounted the back of the heavenly cow and never again descended to earth. Will not the fatal day arrive for our homeland as well, when the gods of the earth turn away from humanity? If nature perishes, then the culture that has sprung from it will die as well. If culture dies, then the language of our ancestors will be forgotten. Without the earth, culture, and language, there is no nation, and no decrees by officials will bring it back to life again. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. Chief Seattle.